Hello and welcome to Mississippi Insight. I'm Byron Brown. Thank you for joining us. This is our capital city. This is the picture that's portrayed to people around this country. People ask about Jackson, what's going on? This week, violence in the capital city draws a response from state leadership. Are Jackson leaders getting the tools they need to curb crime? Mayor Chuck Wangela Mumba returns for our regular series of interviews and responds to public safety worries, garbage service, and addressing homelessness on Mississippi Inside. The April 30th shootout at the state fairgrounds refocused a lot of attention last week on this question. What will it take to get violent crime under control in Jackson? State lawmakers and Hines County crime fighters on Wednesday unveiled a new public safety initiative for the capital city and surrounding Hines County. It includes support for more temporary judges, assistant district attorneys and public defenders to hold those who commit crimes accountable. But it was that mass shooting during the Mugbug Festival that riveted attention once again to deadly crime in Jackson. Security officers on the fairgrounds shot and killed a teenage shooting suspect. Two other teenage suspects are in custody. The shooting drew an emotional pledge of support for crime fighting efforts in Jackson from Agriculture Commissioner Andy Gibson. I want you to make no mistake about it. We, I and you, and all law-abiding citizens and, and stakeholders of this city, we are at war with the criminal element in this city. Nothing less than war. They have declared war. It is up to us to finish it. We are at war with an increasingly emboldened and increasingly youthful criminal element, apparently gang elements, that have no regard for life and no regard for the law, and they must be stopped. Uh, I've had people tell me that the state should abandon the city of Jackson and the state capitol and just move somewhere else and hand it over and start over. That's the one thing we cannot do. I totally disagree with that sentiment because when you're at war, you don't retreat. You don't give up ground. To do so would cede this territory to the worst of the worst, the criminal element that already has their eyes on Jackson and to give up and walk away and not defend this city would result in criminals bleeding over into surrounding neighborhoods, communities, counties, both sides, north and south. And like a weed, it was spread until it's uprooted. With those fiery comments in mind, we turn to Mayor Chukwe Anchalamumba. He joined us Thursday to continue our regular series of interviews on city affairs. Let's go right to Mayor Chukwe Anchalamumba joining us by Zoom. Mayor Lamumba, welcome back to Mississippi Insight. Thank you for having me, Byron. Uh, always a pleasure to speak with you uh, and address the issues that are on uh, people's minds. Uh, first off, we, what are your thoughts as the, we digest the Commissioner Andy Gibson's uh, following comments uh, following the deadly shooting at the fairgrounds on April 30th? Well, you know, I would say that, that the concerns over public safety uh, have long existed for us uh, and our entire community. Uh, it existed, you know, uh, at the beginning of COVID when uh, I suggested that we needed to sus suspend open carry. Uh, and Commissioner Gibson was one of the most vocal uh, opponents of that. Uh, it existed when we said that, uh, that, that our gun shows are too, um, too frequent and, and, and uh, it is leading to a prolifer proliferation of, of weapons all across our city. Uh, and so those things are concerning. I am always ready and willing uh, to speak and, and work with anyone. Uh, you know, when I bring up these issues, it's not uh, to take jabs at anyone. Uh, it's not to be in opposition. It's to lift up the concerns of our community. Uh, and so it's important that we look at this in a comprehensive way. Uh, and if we are at war with something in our community, uh, what appears to be a war that is taking place across the nation, then we should not arm the opposition. Uh, and, and so uh, that's a basic tenet of, of any conflict that you're in, uh, is that you have to be cognizant of, of uh, the decisions you're making and how it may contribute to the problems that you face. Uh, and so, you know, we certainly are grateful that we have large events that take place at the fairgrounds. Uh, we're certainly grateful that uh, we're proud to be the capital city. Uh, but when we have property that is state owned, uh, that we have little control, we should be a part of the discussion about how those, uh, what events take place benefit us uh, and, and how it may have consequences to us as well. And so we just merely want to be at the table and we want to work in conjunction with one another instead of in opposition. 
Well, Commissioner Gibson says he's willing to work with anybody interested in addre addressing crime, not only at the fairgrounds, but across the uh, whole city. He acknowledged that his powers as Ag Commissioner are limited in this regard. But do you think that Andy Gibson has a role to play in helping Jackson curb crime? Uh, I, I'm willing uh, to sit down with anybody. I think that, that anybody who is in leadership, uh, I think community members uh, on uh, across the board, um, they, they play a role and in, in, uh, certainly uh, are invited to the table. Uh, so I'd like to speak with him. Uh, I'd like to maybe speak to him uh, about the vantage point of what crime looks like in, to Jackson, uh, what it looks like in our communities, what are the nuance uh, things between the laws that we have, how it applies here versus what it may look like in other places. And so I look forward to that if, if he's willing. Uh, I'm certainly willing to meet with him and in any other state leadership uh, and, and anyone who wants to come to the table. Uh, there's the broader initiative unveiled by lawmakers Wednesday to bolster public safety in the city in Hines County. Is this the sort of crime fighting support that you want from state leaders or does the city need more? Uh, well, I think that, that Chief Davis uh, spoke to it appropriately. Uh, I think it's time that we put our money where our mouth is, uh, you know, if we're going to do this uh, and look at a comprehensive strategy. Uh, and I think that we cannot uh, lift up only one community or one area in that crime fighting strategy. The issues of public safety are of concern to people across this city, uh, not just within the CCID, uh, not just within one segment of the community. And so we have to be prepared to create a healthy and safe environment across our city. Uh, and so we've been a part of those discussions. Uh, when we lifted up uh, the things that were approved and supported out of our legislative session, uh, we spoke to those because uh, there was a disconnect between the things that we were asking for, the things that the men and women who fight crime each and every day in our city uh, are looking for, uh, and, and what was actually appropriated. Uh, the strategies that we feel are necessary to fulfill our mission to not only uh, not only police when we're, when there is crime that takes place, uh, but to go deeper and root out the very the very causes of crime and make sure that that we're attacking them so that we don't see the frequency of events uh, quite as quite as often. Uh, it is important to understand uh, that if you uh, arrest if, if you have somebody on the block at five o'clock and you arrest them, uh, then there will be somebody in their place at six if you have done nothing uh, to attack the conditions which lead to the criminal activity, the conditions that lead to the interpersonal conflicts uh, and the violence that we're seeing. Uh, yes, there is an interruption in the judicial process. Yes, that has to be corrected. Yes, we have to do everything that we can to make the position of, of police officer and, and, and all of the other elements of the judicial process uh, you know, attractive so that people are in there. Uh, but we also have to realize that there are limitations to what they can do. Uh, we need social workers. Uh, we need people who deal with mental health uh, advocacy and work. Uh, we need people who can interrupt uh, many of the cycles that young people are in. When we look at the increased uh, violence in our community, it is an unmistakable data point that we're seeing a lot of these violent occurrences amongst our younger residents, amongst uh, people who have uh, the limited judgment of youth and are making permanent decisions for temporary problems. I want to get your reaction to Governor Tate Reeves' partial vetoes of legislation to fund several capital improvements. He vetoed over $13 million for the LaFleur's Bluff Complex expansion, as well as money for the planetarium renovation and a convention center parking facility. What are your thoughts on the impact of Jackson from those vetoes? Well, I think that, uh, unfortunately, uh, we may have given him license uh, to veto the planetarium. And, and at the time that we were talking about uh, a bond referendum that was to be supported by the revenue gained from the planetarium. And, and so that needs to be clear because sometimes we don't understand the financial intricacies of, of what it means to take out a bond that, it, that the revenue uh, from that it generates is pledged to paying it back. Uh, and it, it really uh, provides more opportunity than it, than it really ultimately is a bad expenditure for the city. Uh, so, but by not passing that, you know, I, I talked about all of the organizations that had contributed to our planetarium, 
so that we have a unique experience that does not exist in our entire region as an opportunity to not only showcase and educate our children, bring a unique um, and, and modern uh, appeal to our planetarium, uh, but also those in, in the surrounding states that might want to come so that we can generate revenue to address the many holes that we have. When we talk about facilities, parks, and, and, and you know other facilities that the city owns. Uh, it becomes an equation. It's less about the political will in order to, to repair these things. It becomes what is your strategy in order to gain more revenue so that you can address these issues. And so by not passing that, uh, by, by looking uh, the other way from people who have invested in organizations that have invested to make certain that we can fix this facility that has been uh, unrenovated or, or uh, you know, unmodernized, uh, for more than 30 plus years, uh, then it gives license for the governor to do that. Uh, I, I have to be honest that, that the uh, project with the golf course uh, was not one that the city of Jackson played a significant role in. Uh, so I can't really speak uh, to the merits or, or uh, the problem, uh, the, the problem of, of a veto to that. I, I, I think that is better placed in the hands of those who, who were lifting that issue up. Uh, when it comes to uh, the parking lot across uh, from the convention center. This is an area that we have been focused on. Uh, sometimes, you know, people don't care how a watch works. They just want to be able to tell time. Uh, but we do have to focus on how that watch works. Uh, it is complicated by a HUD back loan that says that there are certain metrics we have to meet in the development that takes place there. And if we're building something that does not align with what HUD said, uh, then, then we are therefore subject to reducing the money that we get from the federal government in that way. Uh, so the issues with the parking lot across from the convention center are a little deeper than the financial uh, component of it. In fact, we believe uh, that we can creatively figure out the financial components of how we uh, smooth out a parking lot, how we prepare it for development for a hotel or, or whatever resources that we feel are, are most beneficial, not only to the convention center, but uplifting downtown and the economy that we enjoy and need to prosper downtown. Is a hotel in the future for the, for the convention center? I mean, that's been talked about for many, many years, but nothing's ever happened. Yeah. Uh, well, our planning and development, and, and once again, it gets to what I just said about the HUD back loan and making certain sure that we take the proper steps and that, that we're working uh, in alignment with what they said. Uh, but yes, the plans that, that are incorporated do include a hotel. Uh, it is simply not just a hotel. Uh, what we did uh, was we did a, a uh, uh, we did a, a survey. Um, we, we did a, a planning assessment uh, because what we want to be is no longer a city that chases projects. We want to be a city that chases a collective vision, uh, making sure that our current decisions align with previous decisions that have been made and future decisions that we anticipate. And so we're looking at a mixed use development that will not only incorporate uh, more parking. Uh, it'll incorporate a convention center hotel. Uh, it will can incorporate what much of our downtown market has been crying for, and that's residential development, retail development. We want to create an experience that when people choose to come to Jackson, uh, that they enjoy themselves so uh, significantly uh, that they know what their experience will be and they choose to come back. And so there are a number of components that we have to make certain that we get right in that process. And, and uh, while I am a naturally uh, impatient person because I like to see progress and I like to move to the next thing. Uh, some things uh, just unfortunately demand uh, that it take more time. Uh, we found ourselves in this HUD loan uh, because of, of a, a deal that went wrong, where property that was owned by the city was given to a company and the city had to purchase its property back. That is the very reason that we have this HUD loan in the first place. And so we want to be far more intentional in our process so that we don't find ourselves in that type of danger in the future. Let's talk a little bit about garbage. A lot of Jacksonians want to hear what you have to say about the garbage service at this point. New Orleans-based Richard's Disposal has been picking up the trash since the, uh, the uh, uh, April 1st, they've been keeping their trucks at Hawkins Field. Now we hear that the FAA wants those trucks moved away from the airfield. What do you think about this development? Well, let, let me say this, and I'm going to be limited in what I say uh, because I'm moving on from it. 
uh, we're, we're talking about this time and time again. Uh, the facts are the residents' uh, trash is being picked up. Uh, what I do know about the FAA letter uh, is that there is a long stream of emails that confirm that the FAA knew that there would be garbage trucks, that they had agreement with it, uh, and, and that there was no problem. Uh, and so that last minute switch, 180 degree turn, uh, represents that, that something a little strange is happening. Uh, I do know that there is an appeal of that where those things will be presented. Uh, and I'm pretty confident uh, that, that once presented with that and, and that the FAA's decision took place without them making a visit to the actual uh, space itself. Uh, I've been there. Uh, I've not only been there uh, for, for critical information that needed to be passed, uh, I've been at the golf course. You smell absolutely nothing. It is not a landfill. It is essentially a parking lot for the garbage trucks. Uh, and so all of this, uh, this effort to, to you know, try uh, to, to raise some challenge um, is, is unnecessary. And, and at this point where we are as an administration is that we're moving to the other critical issues. Uh, we're moving to, you know, the issues that we have just spoken about uh, and important things that the residents of Jackson have front and center on their minds. Are you satisfied with Richard so far? And what are you hearing from constituents at this point? Uh, I'm in, in uh, the grand majority. Uh, what we have had, we've had two community meetings at this part point. Uh, the overwhelming majority of residents are satisfied. They talk about uh, that they haven't had interruption. Uh, they talk about the fact that that, uh, you know, the trucks are quiet. Uh, they talk about how they place their trash cans down. They talk about the things that are picked up by Richards that, that weren't picked up under the previous contract. Uh, but I also uh, feel that it is not yet a finished product. I feel that there are hiccups. I feel that there, uh, there's a company that, that did not get the benefit of time that we would normally have for a transition of this type. Uh, and so uh, any transition, uh, I think that there are errors that take place, uh, but most especially one that is given in such a, an abbreviated fashion. Uh, and so I look forward to their continued uh, improvement. Uh, and I will tell you that any contractor that works with the city, it is my job and my mission to hold them accountable for the work that they do. Uh, but at this point in time, I feel that they're well on their way to being able to provide a solid service uh, for the residents of Jackson. Uh, and it also ensures fair processes. Now the city has seen some development in curbing homelessness in Jackson. What can you tell us uh, about that and what's being done? Well, yesterday, uh, Byron, I had the, the, the great benefit uh, to attend uh, a ribbon cutting uh, for a comprehensive homeless center that is the first of its kind in our state. Uh, it's not only a, a long-term uh, residence for those that are suffering from homelessness, uh, but it also has a space for them to receive the, the social work assistance that they need the mental health assistance that they need right there on the property. Uh, it's an opportunity for them to go to things like a barber shop that's right there on the property. Uh, it has uh, a, a cafeteria for them to eat. Uh, and so I just want to lift up the names of Potalamus White and, and, and Chloe uh, Dotson right here in our planning and development department. Uh, I remember when Chloe joined us and, and we brought her on to the team, uh, we gave her this specific mission uh, to bring her talent that she has displayed in other locations uh, to help assist with this issue. Uh, she and Ptolemus made uh, great friends and, and uh, have been working diligently. Uh, and I think it's important that people know these names. Uh, while these aren't the people that, that have the opportunity to do the interview that I'm doing with you now, uh, they are the true foundation. Uh, and they are the people that begin to, you know, see that we can rescue ourselves from our challenges. We have to understand that the way that we combat homelessness is not to criminalize poverty, but to instead give the resources that deal with this very complex challenge that people find themselves in. All right, man, not to put you on the spot, but on this day, it is Mother's Day. Any message out there to all the mothers? Well, first and foremost, um, you know, our mothers are the most pre you know, precious resource that we have uh, in the world. Uh, what a mother teaches a child, the child teaches the world. Uh, I was, you know, I had the great benefit to have an amazing mother uh, that is no longer with me. I think about her each and every day. Uh, I think about the things that she taught me, 
you know, I, I think about her, her strength uh, that, that many people were unaware of. I think about uh, the fact that, that while, you know, my, my political principle uh, is aligned with my father, my personality is more like my mother's. Uh, and, and so I think about my personality twin. Uh, I think about my wife uh, who, you know, is, is, you know, not only an amazing professional and, and brilliant scholar, uh, but an amazing mother, and I, I'm delighted in what she sows into our daughters each and every day. And I know that there are so many stories across our city uh, about the strength and resilience and love of our mothers. Uh, and so I, I understand uh, why it is such a heavily celebrated day, because it is deserving of so. Mayor Mama, thank you. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for joining us on Inside Again. Thank you. All right, and we'll be right back. We look forward to hosting Mayor Chukwe Anchalamumba next month here in Studio A. Thanks to him and to you for joining us. We'll be back next weekend with more of the political and current affairs coverage that you demand. I'm Byron Brown. From all of us here at 12 News, make it a great weekend.